Since the local cats have already appeared on this channel more than once, I thought let's take a look at something for dogs for equality. So I've chosen one of the many um, USB rechargeable dog collars you can get on eBay. And this one's got LEDs in it. It can also be cut to length. We shall cut it to length. Check that out. So you press the button once, it goes into high-speed strobing mode, which is consistently it's flashing at a fixed speed, but it's showing differently with the frame rate in the camera. Then it's got the slower speed, then it's got static and off. And for those of you who are going to ask, if I press and hold the button, it doesn't go into SOS mode. It just goes through the same sequence. So it's kind of a, like a bike chip. To put it on the dog, you press this little button in and it releases it. It pulls out the end. I found that was super stiff initially. I, I've pared it away with a knife to try and make it come in and out easier. I'm not sure that would be a good thing because bear in mind you don't want it to come off accidentally. Um, you can cut it to length. If you undo this sort of collet, the pipe itself is just squeezed over a sort of a nub. So let's cut it one LED down. I can see an LED here, so we'll cut it here with a pair of snips. And we'll also see what LED is. I think I can guess what it is. So we've cut that. Let's see if we can squeeze it over here easily. It might not go over easily. Oh, it's not too bad. It could do as being warm to actually make it go over here. Sir. But once you've got it on, you can then slide the little collet up to kind of lock that. And then it locks in. So let's take a look at the LED. I'm guessing, yeah, it's what I expected. In the past, these would have been little 3mm LEDs, but now they've gone to the uh, sort of resin blob type LED. Interestingly, though, a lot of the other ones have the the wire peaks up um, to, re to where the LED goes on, the resin, but this is absolutely flat. Maybe just to make it go through this easier, or maybe it's just a better way of manufacturing I'm not really sure. You wouldn't think that would be the case with the resin blob, but I digress. It's got a USB port with a little rubber flap over it. The little rubber flap, let's zoom down this little tiny bit. The little rubber flap is not great. It opens far too easily. This is good for if you want to actually open it for charging, but it's going to just ping open all the time anyway. And that just leaves the opening of it, because we are going to open this and see what size the... Uh, Lithium cell is inside. What does this? Does this come off? I guess it probably would. Yes, it comes off in sort of roughly the same way. So I'm guessing that the yeah, there's the uh, string of LEDs inside that. Excellent. Quite nice actually. Uh, let's open this up and take a look inside. So this video is dedicated to the people I call man and dog. That was quite easy to open. I shall go and retrieve the bits. There's one bit. There's the other bit. Uh, man and dog, the lithium cell doesn't have any markings on it. I did not check this for, the, for capacity. So, oh, it's interesting. It's got a multicolor LED for the charging of the single package. Right, tell you what. I'm going to take a picture of this uh, so we can take a closer look at it. The picture has been taken. The reverse engineering has been done. I'd like to say there are no great surprises, but there are a couple of significant surprises. So let's take a closer look at this. First surprise is the use of the LED to indicate the charging status. It can be either red or green or blue, because it's a standard red, green, blue video wall style LED, except they just haven't connected the blue pin. The blue LED is in there, but they're just using the red and green. It's an interesting way of doing things. The other real weird thing is this, which is a standard LED package, but it contains a flasher chip. So they've mounted the flasher chip in, connected to the four leads, and then they filled it with black resin instead of clear resin, which means that that's just a convenient way of mounting that chip. It's quite neat. There's a standard LTH7B charge control chip. There are There's a capacitor across the lithium cell, which is connected between these pads. We've got the 22 ohm resistor. That's 220 multiplier. So it's 22 ohms in series with all the LEDs going out here. That's the string of, this string of LEDs. 
that's in the actual the collar the sort of yeah the the collar tube this bit we've got a 1k resistor 102 which is limiting the current to both the LEDs in this and there's only one resistor to do that for a very specific reason it's to show it's to allow it to switch between the charging and charged indicator LEDs with just one pin the only other resistor after that is this 103 that's 1030 so that's one that's 10k and it's going to the programming pin of this because this little LTH7B is the charge control chip so let's take a look at the schematic. Oh, uh, the lithium cell, the dimensions are roughly 5mm thick, 11mm wide by 30mm long. And there is a cell called 501130, which fits those dimensions, that has a capacity of around about 120mAh. This might not be the best one, so it's probably going to be around about 100mAh or thereabout. It has no protection chip in the end, but that doesn't really matter because once the voltage goes below about the two, three, three volts to 2.5 volts-ish of these LEDs, they'll start getting quite dim and uh, they'll stop conducting below its, before it's been over-discharged. Let us bring in the notepad to doodle with. It has its own pen. That's quite handy. I shall tame this very slightly. Oh, that's maybe a bit too much. That's better. So the charging circuitry comes, starts with the USB input, USB in. And it goes straight into the charge control chip. Let's draw that a wee bit further along. So here we have the, what was that called again? It's the LTH7B. LTH7B. Which is a... Hold on, what, that's the, I've got the data sheet here. It's the 4054 chip, but it's the little 5-pin version of it. it, has the LTH7 marking. The LED, interestingly, the LED is powered via that resistor, the 1K resistor, 1K, so that's plus 5 volts in. Uh, and that's the sort of zero volts, that's the sort of ground rail which is common throughout the whole thing. The 1K resistor feeds down to the package with the two LEDs. So there's the green LED, green, and the red LED, red. The green LED is connected straight down to the zero volt rail, and you'd think it would just light all the time because of that. However, the red one is connected to the charge status charge but the charge status is a little line above above it meaning that it's inverted which means that while it's charging it pulls the negative of the red led down to the zero volt rail and what that means is that the voltage between here and the zero volt rail when the red led is lit is the voltage the led plus whatever drop there is in that pin so it's going to be just above two volts and that's not enough to make the green led light so the green led stays off and the red light shows it's charging there's a resistor from PROG where you actually program the current and it's a 10k resistor in this instance. Um, there is a formula for that. I didn't check what the charge current was and I've now removed the lithium cell. Foolish, but not to worry. I didn't check it for capacity either because I, I just didn't think about that. I should have actually let the thing fully discharge and charge it, but I didn't. I could sew it all back together. Hmm. So we get that 10k resistor, then we've got the output to the lithium cell. We'll put the lithium cell way over here. So there's a the little lithium cell. And we've also got the little capacitor across that, just for stability. Particularly given that the uh, flasher chip's going to be pulsing that load on that, so they want it to be stable. Just ultimately, it's just to probably to actually make it more stable for the flasher chip. The LEDs. On the output strip, let's just draw three of them, are all in parallel. So they all flash together and it makes it very simple to wire. All matched LEDs as that this stuff usually is. And there is a 22 ohm resistor, 22 ohm, to limit the current, plus probably a certain limiting factor within the chip itself. And that then goes down to the switching chip. Let's just call it, since we don't know what it is, we'll just call it F for flasher. 
and that's all that switches down to the zero volt rail and that also provides that pin the negative pin also provides the negative rail for the chip the positive connection for the chip just comes straight down goes in so that's a plus that's a minus that's the flash and there's also a little button which just goes down to the negative connection the negative rail oops uh, so when you push the button it just signals to that to switch through the modes um what else is there to say that is more or less it that's all there is to it it's got you know it is an absolutely minimalist thing it's got the three resistors it's got one capacitor it's got lithium cell and the two chips and then the string of leds it's it's quite a simple device what is strange though is they've grafted an extra led onto this they've actually soldered spliced one in i'm not sure why that is unless it's just part of the run uh, maybe they had a bad led in the run and they just spliced another one in i don't know if that's standard in these units or not particularly what i thought maybe it was just because of a certain they made them a certain number but if you consider that i cut one off so that'd be one two three uh, sorry one one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven and then the extra one makes the 12 so this originally had 12 leds in it and that's more or less it so now let me tell you what i started seeing earlier about the uh, man and dog there's a certain type of human that i refer to as man and dog and these are these are guys that are just basically loners but they're they spend their whole life with a companionship well the, of several dogs ultimately because they don't last as long as a human rather tragically but uh, these guys it's it's this this there's this strange characteristic they're they always like working outdoors so they can take their dog with them to work and they work in the things like power pylons or uh, power uh, electrical transmission towers um they work on aerial towers, they work on landscaping, they've always got outdoor jobs, they always favour the four-wheel drive type vehicles and generally speaking part of their attire will usually be this uh, camouflage cargo trousers, this uh, military, military style ones. Now I've said that, some of you may recognise that I'm describing you, uh, others may recognise the person I've described as a friend, you know you might have a friend who's man and dog, but that's it's very strange, loners who have a dog as a pet, quite important that makes me think maybe it's the dog who's looking after the guy you know it's just that sort of little companionship thing that's so important so there we go it's quite a nice little unit it's nicely designed it doesn't look terribly waterproof although it was glued was it glued shut was that glued shut i don't think it was now uh let's just say it's probably not waterproof so you don't want it to get too wet so um perhaps restrict this to then again that's the sort of night you'd want it isn't it when it's a uh, wet and dark and gloomy and you'd want that extra light to make the dog visible if it decided to go walk about onto a road or something like that but there we go it's a nice enough little unit it's not that expensive a little thing and uh the, it seems quite nicely designed and of course i'm going to scavenge it for the lithium cell now and maybe reuse the circuitry later on too because it's nice and logical but a smart little thing